to be glorified. And Holy Spirit, we just ask you to open our, our ears to hear from you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our opening song. Let's stand and sing. opportunity to shake some hands and greet one another as we pass the peace. on yours? What version you got? That's good enough. I mean, there's only like six versions of that song floating around in my book. Okay. Yeah, you just...
All right, let's continue to stand as we worship the Lord in song. Let's stand and sing. song. Let's collect our evening tithes and offerings.
Father God, Lord, we are here tonight to worship you. God, to just lift up the name of Jesus. And, and Lord, sometimes we have all these things going on in our lives and our mind and we're getting pulled in different directions and we're worried about things, we're excited about things. And, and Lord, it's hard to lift up the name of Jesus. So God, tonight I pray that you just restore our hearts. Lord, let us, let us understand that when we turn these things over to you, that God, you have them. Lord, give us the patience to listen to you. Father, I'm so guilty of it in my life to turn something over to you and then try and fix it in my flesh. And God, I pray that tonight, Lord, we'll just, we'll know that, God, you have a plan. You're working through it and you, you've got us covered. And God, teach us to trust you, to trust in you. And Lord, I do pray for this, these tithes and offerings. God, I pray that you would bless them and anoint them to God. You would use them to bring glory and honor to your name. Lord, to reach this community with the message of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for the message tonight that I can keep my flesh out of the way, God. That I just be your messenger. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to open our ears to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, go ahead and have a seat. All right, so last week... Last week we looked at the, the, the scripture where Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. We talked about the significance of this because it was the start of his public ministry. And, and we see, remember we talked about the so one time in scripture where you look and, and Jesus, the Father, speaks from heaven and the, and the Holy Spirit are all there. This crazy thing happens as Jesus comes out of the water. And tonight we're going to pick up the story when Jesus is calling his disciples. Okay? And I find it so interesting that we're talking about Jesus calling disciples as this week uh, between Sunday and Monday. And tonight kicks off the first week of Multiply, which is an entire course on making disciples. It's amazing how God works those things out, right? But specifically tonight, we're going to look at one guy by the name of Nathaniel. So let's pick up the story in John 1, 43 through 51. It says, The next day Jesus decided to leave for Galilee, finding Philip... He said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was the from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and to whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, How truly... Is, uh, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me, Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will, see, you will see heaven open up and angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. All right, so here we have this, this thing where Jesus is out calling his disciples. Um, we see this encounter, and it's, it's interesting to me that one of the most often quoted scriptures is the one that says, Nazareth, can, Nazareth, can anything good come from Nazareth? And it, no one really knows who said that. Okay, so this is, this is that passage right there that we're talking about. And, and here's, here's what's going on. is Jesus is leaving, and he's got his current disciples with him. And he looks at Philip, and he says those famous words. He says, follow me. All right? And, and this, is, this is the truth. Jesus is saying that to every single person in the world today. Every single of us right now, Jesus is saying, follow me. Okay? That message has never changed over the course of history. All right? And it's not going to change. Philip quickly goes and tells Nathaniel, we have found the Messiah. All right, so Philip kind of handles things a little differently. He's like, look, 
we found Jesus, I'm going to go tell my buddy Nathaniel. We're going we're gonna to take this journey together. And my, my guess is, and just think about this, Philip's probably a little jacked up, a little excited, a little maybe over the top as he realizes the Messiah, the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, has speaking to him and has called him to follow him. Um, Philip obviously knows the scriptures. He references the law of Moses. He kind of talks about the prophets. So again, these are not just people who by circumstance encountered the Lord. They, they had some basic knowledge. We don't know how much uh, of the scripture uh, they knew, but we, we can see that he obviously knew a little bit. Jesus of Nazareth, and again, very negatively, I mean, think about, think about this response and how negative it is. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? <laughs> That's his response to the first time he hears the Messiah is here. Really? Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? And, and we've got to look at this and say, man, he had a very negative response, but he wasn't denying the possibility that this was the Messiah. He was just saying, really? Nazareth? Just like many people today are saying, really? A baby born of a virgin in a manger, right? There's kind of this questioning going on out there. And I love this because Philip doesn't try to convince Nathaniel to, that this is the Messiah. He says, come and check it out for yourself. Come with me. We're going to go talk to Jesus, and you're going to see what I'm saying. Nathaniel agrees to go. Jesus starts talking to him. And he says, here's truly an Israelite where there is no deceit. And what Jesus is saying is, look, I know you. I know you, Nathaniel. And put your own name in there. I know you, Steve. You know, I know you. Put your own name right there. That's how, that's how God speaks to each one of us. Uh, and Nathaniel's kind of blown away. How do you know me? Jesus starts talking about, yeah, I saw you underneath that fig tree. You're just kind of hanging out. And, and Nathaniel then starts to believe because he's seen the truth, right? Philip could have never got to that point with Nathaniel. He had to introduce him to Jesus and let Jesus do the work. Then Nathaniel declares, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. And Jesus kind of stops Nathaniel for a second. He's like, you know, you believe because you've seen. And he says, but I'm going to show you greater things. And this is what Jesus is saying to every single one of us in this room tonight and, and, and all throughout the world. He says, I'm going to show you something even greater. And you think it's awesome that I know you? Wait till you see what I have in store for you. He then, and then Jesus says this, I tell you, very truly you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascend and descend on the Son of Man. And if I'm Nathaniel, I'm thinking this is crazy, right? Like, you're telling me that the heavens are going to open up and I'm going to see all these angels and a bunch of stuff's going to happen. Uh, and again, God had been silent for 400 years just, just prior to this event. So um, a lot of things going on here. So let's look at the application What's the first thing I got out of this passage this week is Jesus is calling every single one of us. We live in a culture, and, and, and I hear this all the time, God just doesn't call people the way he called the disciples. I'm going to say not true. Okay? God doesn't speak the exact same way he did to the disciples, uh, mainly because Jesus is not in the flesh. Right? But God's calling us every moment of every day to follow him and to walk in and to live out his scriptures. So, if we believe that God cannot call us or has not called us or will not call us, I'm here to tell you tonight that that is a straight-up lie from Satan, and we need to come against that in the name of Jesus. All right? God is constantly calling his people to himself. And even, you know, I got people who say, you know, Steve, I've been a believer for all these years, and, and I just don't, I don't think God's really going to call me to do more. And I'm going to say, hold on to your seats, because God's going to take you places you can't imagine when we're, when, when we're obedient and trusting in him. He's calling us to himself every day to be his hands and his feet. We see Jesus calling his disciples, always drawing his people in. I love the passage in Luke 18, 16. Very familiar passage. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such of these. Right? God's calling us to come to him like little children. And we've all seen the cool paintings where Jesus is like sitting down and there's kids crawling all over his lap. And that's the relationship God desires to have with every one of us. And somehow in today's culture we grow up and we become adults and, and we mature and we lose this childlike faith that, man, I just want to hang out with Jesus. Right? And that's, that's what he's saying. is like, come to me. Come hang out with me. Come spend time with me. 
And, and just like the disciples, just like children, we have to completely trust God. I mean, think about his disciples. They're just out doing their job. I mean, think about you're at work tomorrow and someone comes up and says, hey, come follow me. Leave everything behind and let's go. There has to be a level of trust that you're like, all right, I'm in. I'm completely surrendered to you. All right? And that's what God's calling us to be. Is he's calling us to be completely surrendered. And for those of you who have read the first chapter of, of um, Multiply, there's a big section of this week talking about have we surrendered ourselves to the Lordship of Christ. All right, so the second thing we have to look at is a negative reaction to Jesus is not rejecting Jesus. And I think this is something that kind of gets confused in today's culture. All right? If someone's being negative about Jesus... They're at least thinking about him. See, Nathaniel said, Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? And we hear the same thing today. Can any, is this Jesus real? That's not being negative. I take that as someone's asking questions. They're seeking the truth. Having a question or not believing is simply a path to discovering the truth. All right, so when people say, I don't know, man. How can you trust this Jesus thing? That's not, they're not rejecting Jesus. What they're saying is, I just don't know. Now, when people reject Jesus, you will know what that sounds like, right? I've experienced that in some evangelistic attempts, and it's a whole different story. As we walk with the Lord, we have times where we struggle trusting in Him, right? I mean, as Christians, how many of us have said, man, there's times in my life where I just, I just didn't feel God, I couldn't sense God, and, and I just had a hard time trusting in Him, Right? We've, we've all been there, so why would we not think that a world that doesn't know Jesus would just automatically trust in Jesus, right? Nathaniel was, neg it was negative, but however, he was curious about the Messiah. And here's why he was curious. Ecclesiastes 3.11 it says, He has made everything beautiful in, in its time. Here's the key. He has also set eternity in the human hearts. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to end. He set eternity in our hearts. Okay, this is why people desire to know the truth because God put it inside of our hearts to say, man, there is something more than just living 80 or 90 years on this earth and being buried. Okay, I don't know anyone who agrees with that without, without going into, except for, you know, then you get reincarnated, or you get this or that. And you hear all these different spins on what happens after we die and they all show me the same thing. People believe Something happens after death. Eternity takes place, and it's up for us to show them the truth of what that is. Everyone has questions, and sometimes questions come off negatively, right? It's negative notion. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Yes, the greatest thing in the world came from Nazareth, Jesus the Messiah. And the third thing is, the third point is we have, to, we have yet to see what God's going to do, Okay? Some of us have been following Christ for a long time in our lives, and we've, we've seen some crazy things take place. And I just keep going back to the Scripture, and it always tells me, no matter what I've been through, what I've experienced with God, there's always more. And it's going to get crazier and bigger and wilder because we serve a great big God. In tonight's, in tonight's passage, we see God promising Nathaniel that he's going to see some things, like the heavens opening up and, and all that kind of stuff we talked about. And let's take that a step further. Let's look at John 14, 12. Jesus says, Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, however, believe, believe in me, believers in me will do the works I, I've been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I'm going to the Father. Now think about what Jesus is saying. He's like, look, you who believed in me, you've listened to me, you've, you've followed me, and you've seen all these miracles, and then Jesus says, you, and put your name there, you, Steve, are going to do even greater things because I'm going to the Father. I'm going to send the Helper and the Holy Spirit's going to empower you. Right? And, and that's the promise Jesus has for every single one of us is that you know, he's going to use you if we're open and obedient and completely trusting and surrendered to Christ to do mighty and powerful things. But we have to be completely submitted. All right? and, and this is a hard thing is to let go of every aspect of our lives and, and become, as Paul says, a slave to Christ Jesus. So as we recap, and Mark, if you want to come forward for communion, please. First thing is Jesus is calling you to himself every moment of every day. Okay? God doesn't change. If you don't feel God calling you, 
we got to look at our own lives and say, what's going on? Because the scripture says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. People who are negative about the gospel are asking questions. We might not like the way they're asking the question, but they're asking questions. And our job is to provide the answers and show them who Jesus is. I think it's more important that we show people the truth and don't simply tell them. Do we produce the fruit of the Spirit in our own lives? And the third thing is hold on. Because I promise you, as you walk this journey, and as we dive deeper and trust more and become more daring and obedient and bold with our faith, God's going to show us even crazier things. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for tonight, Lord. I thank you for the call that you've put on each one of our lives. God, you've called us to be your disciple. Lord, you've chosen for us to join you in your labors. And God, tonight I pray that, Lord, we just surrender ourselves to you. Lord, as we take communion, we close up the service and head to Bible studies and everything else going on. Lord, don't just let it be an event that happens on a Wednesday night. But God, transform our hearts from the inside out to be more and more like Jesus and less and less like this world. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I couldn't help but think as Steve was sharing on discipleship when uh, in the, the Bible movie that was out just recently when Jesus has this conversation with Peter. He's restored Peter after Peter has denied Christ and restored him back. And Jesus says, Peter, come and follow me. And Peter says, where are we going? What are we going to do? And Jesus says to Peter, we're going to go out and change the world. And that's God's invitation to each one of us, to join him and change the world around us, to be light in dark places, to be salt in a place that has lost its saltiness, to literally be the door that God walks through into people's lives. And as we prepare for communion, I want you to come into God's presence with that kind of an expectation. He's the Jesus that is in our stained glass window, which is hard to see in the dark, but he's the Jesus with the open arms saying, come, follow me. I want you to be part of my life. And so it was that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to the Father, he broke it, saying, This is my body, given for you. As long as you eat this bread, do it in remembrance of me. And again, in the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks again to the Father, he said, This cup is the blood of the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me. This communion, this remembrance that we, the church body, participate in on a regular basis reminds us that Jesus welcomes us all into his family and says, you know what? I want you to partake of all of my blessings. So let's just join in just a very short prayer, and then I'd like you to just come up and we'll serve the communion. Let's join together in prayer. Father God, what a privilege it is to come into your presence. What a privilege it is to be invited by you to participate in your kingdom work. Lord, thank you that you say, you know what? I've done it all. I've paid it all. I've given it all so we could join you. Lord, what an awesome God you are. Lord, stir our hearts tonight and draw us in close to you and lead us on the journey that is ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Please come.
God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing our final song this evening. Let's stand and sing.
Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time tonight. Father, we pray that as we leave this place, that God, you will use us to be a light to this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.